Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and I'm very excited to talk about this uh, pla exoplanet, Proxima Centauri b, which is uh, not just the nearest exoplanet, uh, it is the nearest potentially habitable exoplanet. It is a distance from its parent star that could potentially uh, allow for liquid water on its surface, but we'll get to that later. So Proxima Centauri is the nearest star to the Sun, However, it's, uh, it was only discovered about 100 years ago. Uh, it's uh, closer than Alpha Centauri, but it's a whole lot less bright. Um, so let's just talk about that. It was discovered in 1915 by Robert Innes, who was the director of uh, an observatory in Johannesburg, and he observed that its proper motion, which means that the motion from year to year across the sky was pretty high, but more importantly, it was almost identical to the proper motion of Alpha Centauri. And so uh, he surmised that it was very close, might be even closer than, Pro than Alpha Centauri, but also that it might actually be attached to the Alpha Centauri system. So Alpha Centauri is actually made of two stars. It's one of the brightest stars in the sky, but it is a binary. It's made up of two stars. Alpha Centauri A is 1.1 solar masses and is about 50% brighter than the Sun. Uh, Alpha Centauri B is only 0.9 solar masses and it's about 50% uh, fainter than the Sun. But together, they are one of the brightest stars in the, su in the sky and uh, certainly in the southern hemisphere. Now, Alpha, now those two orbit each other in an, like an 80-year orbit, so they're relatively close to each other, I guess. Uh, you know, like distance of Neptune, uh, but Proxima Centauri is about 15,000 AU away. That is a really, really long distance, and for a long time they weren't sure whether Proxima Centauri was actually in a bound orbit around Alpha Centauri, but the odds of it not being part of the system is are pretty remote. I mean, just to have the same relative motion uh, and to have a relative velocity that's so low would really imply that they at least evolved together in some way or another. Now, Proxima Centauri is about 12% of the mass of the Sun, so its radius is about 15%, so it's really small. But because it's small, that means its energy output is very, very low. In fact, its luminosity is about 0.17% of the Sun. That's, that's you know, five, six hundred times fainter than the sun. So anyway, yeah, people suspected for a while there might be a planet around it, and I believe it was called the Pale Red Dot Project. They were looking for at it. They were looking at Doppler shift in spectral lines, and they believe in this later pa latest paper that they have observed a uh, spectral line deviation over a, a periodic deviation of about five kilometers per hour, which is really tiny when you consider that uh, you're really measuring this relative to the speed of light, which is quite high compared to five kilometers per hour. Anyway, that the periodicity of this is about 11 days, and given the mass of this type of star that Proxima Centauri is, that would imply that it's in an orbit 0 0.05 AU. Now, uh, we, we don't know the inclination, but we know that if the orbit was exactly edge on, then the mass of this planet would have to be uh, 1.27 Earth masses. However, we don't know the inclination. If the inclination is higher than that, then uh, the mass of the planet has to be higher to produce this actual oscillation. So the lower mass is 1.3 Earth masses, but it could be, you know, three Earth masses. They, they say there is a 90% probability that it's less than three Earth masses. So let's talk about habitability because a number of the news outlets have been, you know, going crazy with this idea that there could be aliens or something or we could send people to that planet and explore it and whatever. So, uh, yes, it is in the habitable zone, which means that potentially liquid water could be on the surface. The mass is potentially Earth-like, but it is in a kind of crazy position. I mean, it's 0.5 AU, 0 0.05 AU from uh, Proxima, which almost certainly means it's tidally locked. Now, a tidally locked planet isn't spinning fast enough, and so 
are to really... A, a tidally locked planet has problems in terms of habitability. First of all, there's the obvious one, that one side of the planet ends up permanently facing away from the sun and gets frozen, and the other side gets baked. And there might be some nice region along the Terminator line where everything kind of balances out. And, uh, okay, sure, that's not an insolvable problem, but there's a bigger problem, because Proxima Centauri is, being that close, is quite a hostile environment. It's got a lot more x-rays, for example. It's got less general heat. The, you know, 68% of the sunlight, or rather Proxima light, as I guess is the correct term. Uh, but if it's frozen, if it's tidally locked, then it's not going to be rotating fast enough to really have a, a big powerful magnetic field and as we know big powerful magnetic fields magnetospheres serve to protect the atmosphere from stellar winds and it could be that in the five billion years that this has been there uh, that it's just been stripped bare and there's no atmosphere left and you've just got a giant vacuum of a rock ball sitting near this planet uh, but Having said that, we know that the eccentricity is less than 0.35, and that is still allows for things like a 3 to 2 spin orbit resonance, rather like Mercury. If you don't know about Mercury, Mercury rotates, I think it rotates three times for every two times around the Sun. So, uh, And that's kind of held in constraint by uh, its orbital uh, eccentricity. So it's possible that although it would be normally tidally locked at that distance, that in fact it's in a spin orbit lock, which is a type of tidal lock, which allows it to rotate. And that would actually be okay, because then the period would be of the order of, of weeks, um, a week, and therefore you could actually potentially have a strong enough magnetic field to repel the continual bombardment of the stellar winds and everything and uh, keep whatever life there evolves. Another interesting thing to note is that because it's a red dwarf, it's going to last a really, really long time. It's going to last, you know, trillions of years, something like three to four trillion years at its current rate of burning. So if there's any hope of an ecosystem, it will have plenty of time to figure out the genetics or whatever evolve. So 4.25 light years from Earth, that's how close Proxima Centauri is. 15,000 uh, or is 150,000 AU from uh, Alpha, Alpha Centauri. That is a really long way by the way, 150,000 AU. If, it, if you play Elite Dangerous and you've ever gone to Alpha Centauri and tried to fly out to Hutton Orbital, that is a very, very long trip that will drive you crazy. Incidentally, actually, Elite Dangerous, they have a planet orbiting Proxima Centauri, but they put it in at uh, 0.01 AU. And uh, I believe there's actually an error. I noticed this today that they put in the, the period of this planet is 31 days. So I think somebody made a mistake and it's actually supposed to be 0.1 AU because uh, that's what the period corresponds to. But, you know, it's just a game. This is real life. I mean, there really is a planet around the nearest star. And you know, already people are, you know, trying to figure out, could we ever send a space probe there? And yes, if we really spend a lot of money and effort building something that would fly really fast or are very patient. Yeah, I mean, this is really amazing. Uh, I love it. And you know, I will continue to track this for years to come, no doubt. We'll find out new information about it, and you'll probably see more excited videos from me as I try to explain the latest development and all sorts of things. And uh, maybe I'll actually do one with graphics next time. <laughs> Until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.